Sebas Matar, 29, based out of Austin, and this is Financial Audit. What do you do for a living? Uh, so right now, currently unemployed. I was a bartender, working the service industry for about 10 years. Okay. And uh, as less than a month ago, I left my job. So left right now. Job. Okay, so yeah, I left my job. No, 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 no. God, I've never been fired from any of my jobs. Why do you leave yeah. a job? Uh, it was a little bit of a lot. I've been with the company for like 10 years. So I've pretty much had my ups and downs with them. I've kind of low-key built a career there that I didn't want to do. I didn't want to serve tables mm. forever. Mm -hmm. And I had been through like over the course of 10 years, maybe like five different rebuilds and different teams and different store locations, all within the same company. And I kind of just started, started to see what was coming down the pipeline as far as like a new general manager was in the picture, a new head chef was in the picture, regional was breathing down the necks. And I was like, all right, you know, my boss who, uh, since I transferred, I'm actually from Miami, so I transferred from Miami to Austin, my boss who got me the transfer, ended up leaving the company for another company that paid him more. And then the boss who accepted me and took the transfer in Austin, she left the company as well for another company. Okay. So once I saw I had no ties anymore oh, and I yeah. didn't have to make sure I look good for anybody, I put my two <laughs> weeks in, I wrote them a nice letter of resignation, thanking them. Mm. And, uh, yeah, you know, and, and I was like, all right, I'm out. I'm going to figure this thing out. I'm in a new city. You know, I do stand-up comedy. That's the other thing that I'm really trying to do. I make some money off of comedy, but definitely not enough to, like, cover uh, consistent bills month to month. Huh. So, Well, if you want to help me cover consistent bills month to month, please consider subscribing because we're really close to 100,000 subscribers. Everyone is awesome. Thank you so much. So, Two. that's cool. Yes. What do you bring in? What do you think now from comedy? From comedy? Oh, God. Jesus. I mean, I can tell you in the past 12 months, I've done probably uh, maybe $1,000 off of comedy. Possibly, but that's the... Okay, so how were you eating? Well, again, this is... I, I've only not been had a job for about a month now. So before that, I was probably bringing in on the books somewhere like 30000 Well, how have you... Okay, a year? Yeah. Jeez, even... I mean, in Austin, that's hard, but how are yeah. you eating now? Uh, well, my, my wife, now wife, she's got a pretty stable job, and we've always been, like, half and half with everything. Mm. So, we've always, like, rent's been half, bills have been half, groceries or whatever. Oh, she's... So, she's helped subsidizing, pursuing the dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, like, not a sugar mama, but, like, a splendor <laughs> mama. She's, like, I'll give you a little bit till you figure it out, but... Yeah. What, what does she do? She's a wedding planner and an event coordinator. She brings in how much a year? Uh, I would probably say somewhere north of like 60, but I could okay. be, I'm not entirely 100% on that. It's still $15,000 below the Austin median household income. Yeah. But that is she definitely knows. She's definitely like, I got to get to 100K. Like that's where I need, that's where she wants to be. And that's what she's. It's definitely more livable to. than the zero I thought you for, were at for a second. Sure. No, 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 no. So yeah. married. So now we have combined finances yes okay so that definitely changes the picture a bit so this comedy pursuing 29 career change going into an incredibly competitive field right absolutely austin might be a town to do that in coming up with joe rogan and everything i mean i think it's it's kind of just the luck of the draw not really yeah. luck of the draw but like Anybody can make it anywhere. Like, I started out seven years ago in Miami, and I saw, you know, people leave Miami, make it somewhere else. I saw people from Miami kind of bubble up and make it in Miami. So I've seen different, and then, of course, listening to different comedians and podcasts and listening to books, you hear everyone has, like, this really weird way of just making it. So, I mean, I don't bet all my marbles on Austin, but I know it definitely doesn't hurt to sure. be able to be in front of a new crowd. Well, so comedy is one of those things, kind of like a musician, right? Where you don't make money until you're one of the very few who make it, right? Right, right. What is your plan for the remaining decades of your life? Have you thought about that? Uh, so primarily with comedy, the good thing about it, it's kind of like you pick how far you want to take it. You know, you yeah. can you can do the Kevin Hart route and, and sell out arenas night in, night out and, you know, make millions. Or you can do like a local club comedy scene, you know, make a few thousand bucks on the weekend. You do four weekend spots. You got four to six thousand dollars, depending on your club. I mean, I've heard of clubs that people make a deal with the club and they end up making like, you know, close to ten thousand a weekend. And these aren't yeah. even like you most likely have not heard of these comedians, you know, and they're making close to 
fifty thousand in a month just off a of club. Well, making a thousand hours in the last twelve months, how far are you allowing yourself to take it before we're like, all right, regroup. Um, Time to go into her career. I think I also don't go into it thinking like this is solely going to be my bread and butter. I mean, I've been doing it for so long that I kind of know that it's not. It's a side hustle. Yeah. Like it's it's not not even so much a side hustle. It's like the primary one, but I know it's not the one bringing in the money. But that's like how I ended up getting on backstage was was through that where I was like, okay, let me shop around and look at what like other people need as far as like voiceover work and as far as like production crew work i've done i haven't done production crew uh per se but i have done like a lot of the manual labor stuff and things like that of different productions mm. um so not looking at comedy ever being my main source of income at least not till like the 10 12 year mark where it's a little different now that's where you kind of got to let it it's got to sit a while before you start getting, you know, ROI on it. So what do you plan to do for the monies? Uh, production work, you know, mm. trying to do Pick the voiceover, the, oh. the, the, the commercials, the... Okay, so you're not choosing something that's not overly highly competitive. <laughs> I mean, for, I think, yeah. The short answer is yes, because at the end of the day, that's like the thing I've been working on for seven years. I haven't been working on commercials or working on these things. I have the capabilities and the skill set to do other things. So you've been doing it for the last month. How has, how has that gone? Um, well, thankfully, I was able to save up a lot of money before I made the move. You know, I didn't just up and... You know, How much did you save up? I'd probably say like, give or take like $2,000. Nothing crazy. Just enough to hold me down for a few months, you know, figure it out. If that. I think, the, I mean, the marriage is what's keeping it afloat. Yeah, yeah, honest. for sure. I mean, yeah. eh, I mean, I lived on my own for three and a half years running pretty much that same schedule. Like running that. The reason why the, that I'm making like 30000 is Even if we're talking in three years, though, Austin's essentially doubled in cost. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like Miami was expensive and like we have these things called efficiencies. Fair enough. Which are like not heard of here. They might be called something else. But essentially what it is super illegal. Somebody has a house with an extra room that they don't use. They make, they break down the wall, make a private entrance and you pay that person in my case was 600 bucks a month and you give them 600 bucks a month and you have utilities and you have everything included, but, and they come in all shapes and sizes and mine didn't have like a kitchen. So I had to kind of like, you know, hot plate toaster oven. I had no ba uh, kitchen sink. So I had to wash my dishes in the shower or wash my dishes in, you know, the bathroom mm -hmm. sink yeah. and stuff like that. There was no living room. It was, it was all one space with everything in it. And I lived there for three and a half years, but what I pretty much would do was, wow. yeah, I got by just pretty much like I got a pen and paper and said like, all right, how much are my bills and how much do I need to make month to month? And I sat down with my boss and I told him like, I'm pursuing this comedy thing. So, and I was at this point, me and my boss had created a reputation where we both knew how we work with each other. I was reliable. I was one of the hardest workers. And like in the ranking system, I was a first rank server. So I went up to him, like, after him seeing what I can do and being like, this is what I want to do. And he was like, dude, no question. Like, I see how much you hustle. So whatever schedule you need, just write it down and I'll make it happen. But now, of course, you're in a partnership. Right, right, so right. So can't just be full on your own. Yeah, no, 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 for what sure. What is your current living situation? Uh, in what sense? Uh, where you live and stuff. Like, uh, I live in a 2-1 uh, not too far from here. I'm like in South mm -hmm. Austin. Mm -hmm. So, and she essentially just takes care of the rent then. Um, as I mean, of now, like she, she right now takes more care of like the going out stuff. Like if we want to go out and have a drink or we want to go out. Cause I'm the first one to be like, yo, we can just stay home. You know what I mean? Like we don't need to go out and do this. So she's like, all right, bro. Like I'm, I'm with you and I want to enjoy your company. Like I don't care. You know, Have you guys go. done the full combining money thing like yet? Where like your yeah. money is her money, her money is your money. Yeah. Yeah. We have, so we have, um, and I didn't want to use her numbers or anything. So these are strictly my numbers. Yeah. Um, but before we moved here, we had, uh, talked about moving to Austin for a few years. And finally the last year, what we were doing was putting away a hundred bucks a week both of us so oh, over okay. the course of a year you know we made a nice little cushion to move over here because we knew all the stuff we weren't going to bring and we're gonna have to buy new stuff and all that and then right before not right before but uh four or five months before we left i proposed to her so we had an engagement party and then people that combined the engagement party with the goodbye party they gave us some money as well so we had that money stashed away yeah. And, um, yeah, we, we do have, like, she has her money that she handles. I got my money that I handle. And then we have a joint account where we both put in what we can. Or, like, when we're paying rent, we take 
from there or we put money back from there or whatever the case may be. All right. So we'll loop back to the career thing in a second, but we have a couple of accounts to look at. Okay. Let's go. How much it. is in your checking account? Because it doesn't have a balance on it. Uh, my checking account, I believe as of yesterday, is probably like 2500 Okay. And you both yeah. manage separate checking accounts at yes. this point? Yes. Okay. Yes. So twenty five hundred, yeah, that's a that's a comfortable balance to have in there. We had five thousand five hundred thirty six come in, which is mostly payroll, which does not exist anymore. Exactly. <laughs> but four thousand nine hundred thirty two went out. How were we gonna have anything similar to that coming out when no money's coming in? Um, I think a big part of it is like. Uh, and not not thousands of dollars, but I know a big part of it is like going out to comedy shows and like having a beer and you have one beer and that's seven bucks and you have two, 14, you tip on that, you're walking 17, 18 bucks and then you're doing four or five shows. You know what I mean? So you multiply that, you're losing, you're not losing. I wouldn't say I was losing, but spending hundreds of dollars on like going yeah. out, drinking, things like that. Whereas now it's a little more, before I knew I was going to get the money, especially working as a bartender, you get cash in hand. You're kind of like, ah, I barely feel this. You know, like the 30 bucks I'm going to spend on drinks, you know, um, I'm not going to feel it. So that's another thing, too. Having cash directly in your hands is completely different from like having to wait for a paycheck every two weeks and like lending. I got you. So lots of Zells going out, lots of Zells and Venmo and then paying off cards as well. Yes. I always pay my card off every month. Oh, that's good. My wife taught me that. Oh, okay. She got my credit score up. Again, how do we pay off credit every month without money? Now you guys are combined, so I guess she right. could, but... No, I mean, I still... that at all? I, I did, did this with a game plan of, like, I'm going to have three months of figuring this out and doing this and doing that. Like, worst case scenario, bartending is not rocket science. What is this? That is my savings account. Okay, you said 2000 I see 5000 I thought you said checkings. What's in my checking? Oh, no, earlier I asked how much was saved up. Oh. You said 2000 before I mo- before I made the jump to leave the company, okay. that's what I meant. But it's like, five thousand now. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's five thousand. But what the cushion I gave myself before is that twenty five hundred that's in the checking. Where'd the money come from? Just the remaining paychecks? Uh, yeah, hourly. You know, okay. hourly. And then I have like uh, I always start. So I have a long history with this company. But long story short, I always save up my PTO and I don't use it. Yeah. So when this does happen, I can cash it out and have, oh sure, and I can count on that money coming in. So when was your last day? The 16th of December. Okay, so leading up to right before then, you know, Salt Traders, Amazon, Nordstrom, Nordstrom, Audible, Apple Subscription, Nordstrom, Nordstrom, Joann's, Bluefin, Sushi, Torchy, Spotify Subscription, Native Native Hostel, Native Hostel, Lyft Ride, Nordstrom, Wendy's, GoPuff, Amazon Order, Amazon Order, Amazon Order, Amazon Order, Nordstrom, Waterburger, Nordstrom, Slackers Brewing Company, McDonald's, Anderson Mill, GoPuff, Nordstrom, Lava Castry, Uber, uh, oh, this is a Postmates, Amazon uh, payment, Amazon order, Nordstrom, Nordstrom. That's something that can't even come close to continuing. Well, I mean, the Nordstrom stuff won't because that's where I ate. That's why Nordstrom was there. Then there's big spends on Nordstrom because of Hated gifts. Nordstrom. Yeah, Nordstrom has restaurants. I was a bartender and server at their restaurants in right. over three locations. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's where a lot of the Nordstrom spending came from. And then... Uh, the Amazon stuff was a lot of like the last minute uh, gift shopping. Oh, sorry, can you curse on here? Sure. No. Uh, and you know, gift shopping and stuff like that, and trying to get the holidays ready. So, like a last minute of all that between. But I did. I definitely did go to Nordstrom to go buy some gifts. But for the most part, Nordstrom is uh, food. American consumerism. Yes, that's fine. It's even though you're preparing for a whole career change that makes no money, we're still spending, 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 spending on those spending, holidays. Spending, spending. Yeah, man, you got to make them people happy. So, what's the hustle look like now? What is the day to day in your life? Uh, right now, I'm just doing. You know, going on backstage, uh, sending out cover letters, sending out. Um, auditions and applying to different, you know, weird gigs. I've always come up on some weird gigs. That's just been my... What has the response been like so far? Um, I mean, I got one hit with yourself. I got another hit with another lady that I'm working on. A uh, she's, she's trying to launch some sort of service. And she kind of wants some, like, test dummies, I would say. So, you know, making a few hundred bucks there with her doing that. And then... Um, there's another website. I've looked into it. I haven't really applied to anything, but it's an ambassador website. So oh, yeah. they freelance ambassadors. And I did a lot of work with the Dolphins and the Marlins back in Miami. 
So I have that ambassador side of me and like that skill set. How many hours a day are you working right now? Right now, I mean, technically, I'm not making any money, you know. Yeah, but working or trying to get work. Trying to get work, stuff, probably, I would say, like, let's say five, five hours, give or take, whether it's me writing comedy, me sending my clips out to comedy clubs. And why don't you get another job? Five hours is not a lot of day. Right. Um, when you only have 5,000. And of course, this will prolong the runway. If you had another job that was bringing in something, it would prolong the runway of you being able to bring in more money before right. your savings was, and you're married, but before your savings right, right, right. was drained. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm just, I, I kind of have like this bohemian outlook where I'm just kind of well. like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not from the standard school of thought or anything like that. So, I just look at it like I left Miami for a reason and I came to a new city and I'm not going to do the same things or look for the same opportunities that I had in Miami in a new city. That's Luckily, money doesn't care about schools of thought. Uh, no, it doesn't. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, but for the most part, that's that's what I'm looking at is just kind of like, you know, working on stuff. There's also... It's a bunch, you know, it's writing the comedy, it's going out to do comedy, and how do you walk into a, a company and go, hey, uh, because this is pretty much what I did when I moved here. Uh, Uber Eats and stuff, you're ordering a lot of Uber yeah, Eats, things yeah. where you make your own hours. I, I used to do Postmates as well before, a few years ago. Um, I think the real, the best scenario for like those sort of things would be ride sharing, like Uber is going to sure. be the best bang for your buck and all that. Sure. Uh but so, again, not my car. I'm sharing it with my with my wife, um, which I'm sure she wouldn't mind. I didn't know that. Yeah, but that's why I'm like, nah, I don't like using other people's cars for those sort of stuff. Like, I barely like driving to gigs with her car. Any but, reason you don't have a car? Because, you know, it's a car infrastructure place, so you kind of have to have one, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, I really wanted, so when I moved here, I had my car, but due to, like, the state inspections, my car wasn't going to pass it. The emissions. It was that bad? That. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. I had it checked in... In Miami by a mechanic and I told him like, you know, is this going to pass the, because we don't have emissions tests over there or anything. Uh, and the guy was like, I mean, it will if you put like $3,000 in it. And I've had this car for 10 years and I was like, all right, like I'm definitely not dropping $3,000 on this. And then my fiance was like, yo, let's just share my car. She works from home. Yeah. So I was like, all right. That works. I mean, it took. Uh, it, it's still taking some. Drive her job while she's working, then. Huh? Well, no, she she can't work. Like she can work from her car, but she needs a reliable like Wi-Fi. No, dr you work. Yeah, in her yeah, car yeah. while she's working from home. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not gonna take her car like that. What? No, well, it's not taking. We're well, not what, taking. What no, no, no. But like, I don't like unnecessary driving in her car. Although she's the one that goes like, "Yo, this isn't is making money necessary." Car. Yeah, but again, just the school of thought where I'm from, it's kind of like, I'm going to try to do this first before I kind of, like, I've never put money first. Money's never been a motive of mine. It's the reason why I've been doing comedy for You want to be able years. to retire? Uh, yeah, and I know that for a fact in comedy, if you do it well enough, there is that. Well, we don't bank on that. I mean, that's like you trying to You don't bank on that. No. I bank on that. Okay. I've invested seven years of my life. Realistic humans comedy. don't bank on that. That's why I, I'm I'm not from that. Like, you know, it's not every day that you tell somebody like, yo, I'm not going to go to school and I'm going to pursue stand-up comedy. People look at you sideways. I've done it long enough. I've had enough conversations with people where they're kind of like, and then they don't know that. You can make 10 G's in a weekend at a mediocre club. Well, yeah, but what if, but that's such a, that's such a, what if there's like a but million no people who want to make it. What do you mean? There's like a million people who want to make it in all these different things. We hear about the stories of the people who do make it. Right. What happens when statistically. Right, 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 right. It's just like someone doesn't make it. What, what do they do? They're not able to retire because they've put For all their time sure. into this. So granted, I, I don't want to sound like these, uh, these little gurus and whatnot, but like, I don't think of like, what if I don't make it? Like, I genuinely don't have that thought in my head. That's not a healthy way of thinking though, is it? Cause that's not I realistic. Mean, it it's not in the real world. It is. How That's I, not in the real world. Kevin Hart. You don't think someone Again, told him like, what if, what no, if you don't of course, make it? Of course. Absolutely. Right, right, right. Of course. But what about the 99% who don't? Again, we only hear about the people who do make it. That's right, what right, I just right. said. For sure. Uh, I mean, I think I'm part of that 1% that does. That, that will make it? A thousand percent. Isn't it more mature to be prepared for the statistical likelihood of not? I think that's safe. And yeah. I've never played and it Immature. Safe. Isn't it mature? Nah. What are you saying? People who do things that are reckless are immature? Yes. Like Tony Hawk is immature? 
What do you mean? Immature? He, that's his career. I mean, that's but not that's immature. reckless, is it not? He's throwing his life out there. He's I risking bet you it. he has all these insurances on and all these measures. Before he did all that, though, I bet. What do you? So Before when he first he got that, into you it, think, you think he was like, "Man, I gotta stay at this McDonald's because, like, no, like I'm sure when Tony Hawk was like, "I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this," and mm-hmm. that's the type of mentality he had. Well, I don't think he was thinking about. What if this happens? And what I, I genuinely don't like. Well, not necessarily. We don't know. He could have been working. He could have. He could have been working during that whole thing. And okay, if he was going through a situation where he uh, was making no money and he was just jumping into something like that, that could you know put his life in danger, I would say of course that is an immature choice. But he just became well. It's not just luck because it came from talent. But right. he became one of those where he did get lucky to make it. That doesn't make it a mature choice necessarily. I mean, I just see it as like playing it safe isn't always the best bet. Like, yes, you can have for sure you can have the money and you can do that. I, for a short time, I worked for Tesla. I worked for Tesla for four months. I was a sales associate or a, a sales whatever. It's not an associate. It's something else. No commission, no nothing hourly. And I mean, I was working, doing the grown up nine to five, the real mature thing. And I was miserable. And I was like, this is no. And everyone around me was miserable, too, because we would talk about it at the lunch. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no f-ing way I'm doing this tomorrow. Right. Like, yeah. And, and I'm like, you're, you're going to do that. And, and you'll hear people. And this is that I was on the lower tier. I didn't even have half the responsibilities the big heads had. And those guys weren't even that big head. Uh, and I would just be like, no, man, like I'm not going to trade in, um, my freedom, my liberty, my way of feeling good. Again, I'm also coming from an aspect of like, I went up to my manager and told him I need to work weekdays only, no weekends, no nights. I'm only working Well, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, right, right. Do you understand how... Those are two polar opposite ends. There are middle grounds there between someone who for is miserable sure. For sure. and to them, the person who is absolutely miserable at the job, they show up to that job every day and they say, oh my goodness, I'm so miserable at this job. Then they go home and they don't apply to a single job. I say they're essentially acting like a child. If True. they are miserable in that situation, now there are times where you are busting your butt to get another job. And if you're not getting that other job, then, okay, fine. Yeah, right. I would complain about it, too, because they're at least putting in the work to get that other thing. But the vast majority of people who are just complaining, I, we've all worked with them. I've worked in the service industry for years. Right. If They just complain about the job, and then they don't do anything to actually fix right. it. Right, absolutely. So, 100%. like, I don't take that to heart very well Right. That in that Tesla situation. I mean, I also saw, I also see, not just saw, but I also see the handcuffs people put themselves in when they're like, well, you're going to make $70,000 a year. And if you do X, Y, Z, not only are you going to make your 70, but you're going to get another 20 on top of that. And on top of that 20 you're getting, you're going to get stocks. And you're going to be able to buy in at half price. And you're going to be able to do all this. So now people are going, oh, man, like I want to leave, but I'm so tied up here. I'm so tied up to this job that I can't afford to leave it. Everyone puts themselves, mm. not everyone, a lot of people that I've met have put themselves in positions where now they're, they can't move because if they move, they, there's too much at risk. And that over the course of my life, I've put myself in positions where I can kind of bounce in and out, figure it out. I mean, I've washed cars. I've sold products at Walmart, Tesla, Marlins, Dolphins, radio, bartending, serving. I've done all that. But I've never put myself in a situation where I'm like, confined and I can't make a move because I know they offered me an assistant manager position many years ago, early into my comedy career. And I was like, okay, so you want me to go on salary to get paid for $40? I mean, for 40 hours, but work 60, not have my nights, not have my weekends. And what, what happens to my comedy? It slowly starts trickling away because Mm -hmm. now, and then being in the service industry, working with so many managers, I, the higher up you go, the more the more contained you are in that place, the harder it is for you to break away from it. Cause now you're the GM. Now you got to handle the, the, the front of the house. You got to handle the back of the house. You got to handle the head chef. I mean, no one's forced to the, take a job for sure. I mean, for there's sure. priorities, but we're also talking about nobody walks into that a, versus working zero hours a week for sure. A thousand percent. But I, I do 
see the way people put themselves into this corner and I just kind of go like, I'm not going to. A lot of that mindset, though, they're just kind of uneducated about the job market in general. Like they could find a a position at a competing company or within the overall marketplace that could, you know, maybe they'll start a little lower, but they'll be able to accelerate in a position they care about and actually enjoy. Now there's always caveats to that. It could be the, you know, 2008, 2009 all over again. Then that's much harder to leave a job. Right. But that is not the vast majority of the history since the Industrial Revolution in the country. Right, right. So I didn't know that. They're just wrong well, about I mean, them locking themselves in. It's just it's just what I see. It's the it's the you know you got family. They're just uneducated. Kids. Could be one hundred percent. It could also just be like uh, they don't want to start at zero. Like you know how many companies are hiring GMs off the rip? You know. Well, exactly. That's why I said it's situational to right. the overall economy. So it's like now you have kids, right? Because let's just lo- let's just use my example. I was yeah. ten years with the same company, on and off every now and then, but overall 10 years with the same company. I started when I was 19, I'm 29 now. My life has gone so different than what I thought of in the first, you know, what I could have thought when I was 19. Now you take those same 10 years and you apply it to somebody who was 29 and is now 39, who at 29 had no kids, 39's got three kids, now they got health insurance, they got a wife or a husband depending on it, they got their kids depending on it, they got that income depending on it, now, how do you tell that person just bounce? Just look for something else when you've built what you've built at this company. Because there's also like non-tangibles. Or I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But things you can't measure of like the people you work with, the manager you have, the situation you're in, how close this job is to you. Like, yeah, I've seen people who maybe take a less a pay cut, but now the job is so much further and it's so much more inconvenient for them because there were certain perks that you couldn't necessarily measure Then they on chose paper. the worst job. That but, doesn't make sense. But, but again, scenarios Then they're not change. doing their research and asking the right questions in the interviews and lots of things. Uh, I don't and know if, if that's it's all fur- And if it's true. further, if it's further, then... Use Google Maps before you take yeah, the job. Yeah, but I still don't think that that's... Uh, There's always caveats. You can always get a place and have a bad manager that you didn't know. That's 100% true. Yeah. But if, if anyone feels they're 100% locked in a position that if they go to another company that they're going to lose everything, then they're just wrong. I mean, for sure. I totally get that. But not from, from my experience. I'm not talking about anybody else. From my experience, from what I've seen, I've had those conversations with people where they're kind of like, man, I hate this job. I hate coming here but I just have so much tied up into it that I really can't just bounce. And again, me, thankfully, got, you know, I do want kids, but not right now. I don't have any kids. I don't have any major debt over my head. I don't have, you know, when I got my car, I paid it off in seven months. So I wouldn't have to pay a car note. And I knew that I was going to take this weird, did I know I was going to be a comedian? No, but I knew it was going to be in the entertainment industry. I wanted to do radio. I wanted to do that sort of thing. And ignorance to not knowing that I could go to, at that point, I was going to the community college in Miami. I didn't know that I could go into the production department. That no, I had no idea that was a thing. I thought like, well, if you don't go to school for science or math or social studies like or English, you're not going to get anything. Like I didn't know that. And I went to a, a technical school called Miami Media School. Yeah. I don't regret it because uh, the people I've met, the lessons I learned, I was young and naive but I definitely would have done it over by doing it through a college program and then moving into the university realm. But that sure. wasn't the way that the cards fell in, in my favor. You know, I took a more um, rogue route where I was a basketball announcer at the college. Then I was, um, I, I would do like pep rallies for my old school and like voiceover work for them when I graduate. And it was just like these weird, very weird way of, of doing stuff. That no, we, we do a really bad job in this country in preparing people post high school of what right. they're all what the avenues reality are. is. All yeah. Avenues, yeah. 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 Do yeah, you have 100%. any debt from that community college? Um, right now I do, but I'm, it's up in debate, uh, 7,500. What's in debate? The forgiveness? Ye- no, 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 no. Oh. There was something else before that. Another one of my classmates told me about it. It was a, uh, it's a specific application where they, you give them like what, you tell them exactly what happened to you in your scenario and like the school. And if they find that you were like was it misled pro- or something. Well, but this was a community college. No, no, no. This one, no, no, no. Oh, this sorry. was a technical school. Oh, sorry. This was, no, the, no, yeah, this yeah. was a private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Private technical. Hmm, okay. Maybe. So you get certificates, you get, you don't get a degree, you get a certificate, you get a diploma. And one of my former classmates told me that he submitted this application and it went up for dispute and yeah, yeah, he yeah. won and he got it taken off. 
So right now, have you pursued that yet? I have, and I've checked on it, and they still it still says pending, and it's been going on three years. Yeah, and I tell them like, but do you have a response yet? And they're like, no. All I can say is like, I see what you see. This is what's on my end, and it's just pending under review. Definitely wouldn't all. bank at that, but if, right, it, if right, you right. were led astray, I know there's lots of things like that, and then those colleges, everyone has had their debt forgiven for those kind of colleges. If yeah. anything like that actually didn't happen, then I hope that gets forgiven because obviously that's yeah, it's preying a, upon it's, young. It's people. it's Miami, man. It's a city built off cocaine. What do you think? You know, like <laughs> how do you who do you think is going to rise to the top? Which is why I wanted to get out of there. I just felt so misrepresented. So. <laughs> I just kind of see it like it's another one of these schemes they do, man. They sell you dreams and go like, oh, you you want to be the next radio person? Like, here you go. Read this script. And then you do this little yeah. demo. And then they're like, you're great. So 7500 Is that private debt or federal? Um, I believe it is federal, if I'm not mistaken. Good, because yes. that's what would be forgiven. I don't know if you'd be able to get private Yeah, no, no, no. I got, I got a grant, and then I got a federal loan. Okay. Yeah. So I have that with a federal Any loan. Any other debts? No, nah, just okay. that. But you'll want to get a car at some point, probably. Yeah, absolutely. That's okay. my, that's one of my goals. Written that, wrote, wrote that in my goals journal. Uh, goal for car. how long? Within 12 months. I mean, I don't think in December I'm going to get a car. Absolutely not. But, like, I think somewhere along the lines of, like, June, August, I'll have a better understanding of, like, what my fan finances are looking like. Like, don't get me wrong. June comes around. I still ain't bringing no money. My wife ain't going to be like, well, go out there and, you know, meet Joe Rogan. Like, that's not going to be the play. Like I told her, we both came into agreement. Like, at the end of the day, I know how to bartend. I know how to wait tables. And Well, how long are you giving yourself before you, like... Real world scenario. I'm saying thing. three months. I'm saying three months, three months isn't bad. Yeah, no, no. I'm giving it three months because at the same time, I'm reinvesting like, you know, with those thousand dollars that I made from comedy this past year, I reinvested it in building my website. Uh, I bought, you know, a little bit of merchandise, nothing crazy, just some t-shirts I had made. Um, I reinvested that money into headshots and then ultimately invested some of that, reinvested some of that money into backstage where I was looking for these sorts of weird gigs and jobs and things like that. So three months is what I'm giving myself. If I can break even, that's, you know, not horrible. But again, definitely not the goal. Okay. I appreciate that. I think that's a relatively mature way to look at this. For sure. So that's okay. For sure. I'm glad you're giving yourself that. And I'm totally good with pursuing this as a side hustle. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't, please don't take anything I've said with like, don't pursue this at all. No, no, I'm no, just no. like going hundred percent in when we have nothing and you know, for sure. It doesn't make sense on paper, but a thousand percent. I'm okay with uh, testing it out for a few months since you have the support of the wife. And if she like literally supports you like in a way where like she says like okay this is good then we're big reason why we got married was because i had that backing from her for years okay so that was good but you want to retire a thousand percent let's talk about the statistical likelihood that you won't retire off of comedy money which is fine you could still be a comedian but you're not retiring off of that by getting a million dollar check or something like that right 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 do you have anything invested in retirement um, I do. I have four hundred one k, and if I told you how much I have, I'd be lying. Any guess? Are we below ten thousand? Are we? Yeah, above? yeah. That, I'm okay. pretty sure below ten thousand. I'm, if not close to ten. Do you know compound growth in the overall marketplace? I do not. Okay, so it's like if you put money in. It starts to grow with the S and P five hundred mm-hmm. as an example. Right, right. The index fund S and P five hundred. That will grow on average about 10% a year. So $1 will t- go up 10%. Right. But now that $1.10 will grow 10%. Right. And then okay, it continues the, to compound and compound and compound. Yes. The longer you wait to actually do anything and put into retirement, the less the likely less you'll have to actually be able to retire accurately. Right. Because at 20, what do you think that dollar is worth? If you were to invest it in the S and P five hundred, one dollar at the age of twenty to retirement at sixty five. I think I've heard or seen a number where it's like, what, somewhere north of a million? Am I making that no, up? One dollar, one dollar, a single dollar, a single dollar, single over dollar. Twenty years at gains. Single dollar over until you're sixty five from twenty. I'm not good at math, bro. You're gonna have to give me the answer to this. Eighty eight dollars. Uh, eighty eight dollars. Eighty eight dollars. So for every dollar you put in at twenty yeah, becomes eighty eight dollars. It's showing you the value of compound growth right. from an early age. Yes. 
if you start that at 30, every dollar by the time it turns into retirement, $32, down from $88 to $32. And you're approaching that 30, only Months one away. year off. So you've already lost that decade of the best compound growth of your life of not investing to potentially have the money needed for retirement. If you wait another decade, just testing this thing out and we're not working a lot, it goes down from $32 to $12. Still an incredible return on a dollar. A dollar, $12 sure. still great. But now we've gone from $88 to $12 just for a single dollar putting in. That is what we are losing when we just mess around at an early age. We're good with pursuing things that are passions that we want to do on the side while we're contributing to our future, our likely future selves, just to make sure that you're able to actually survive. And then when that side hustle that you want to do as a passion becomes full time, then we can switch it over to full time. Right, right. That makes sense. We all want that to happen. Right. But more than anything, I want to make sure you're not dying on the Walmart floor in your 80s. Right, right. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Does that math make sense? Of course. So what are your thoughts around this whole thing? Has that changed any perspective? Um, honestly, no, nah, man. I mean, I agree. I know, we, I know the math and the, the facts you're, you're throwing at me, but uh, let me ask you this. Did you go to college? Yes. Did you go to university? Yes. How many years did you spend combined? Five. Five. I didn't do any of that. I okay. Took, I took a whole different route, so like mentally how we view things, how we see things, why it doesn't change my perspective is because I haven't been betting on statistics or numbers for a long time now, for over seven years, even before that. I wasn't betting on being a company man and making and retirement and things. It's literally been like, and I, and I get it. I totally understand where you're coming from as far as like, the side hustle is a side hustle till it becomes the main thing. I don't no like question. the word bet. It's not like at a casino. This is basic math. For sure. For sure. But at the end of the day, what you do is you make a decision. You either go 100% this route or you go 100% that way. No. Well, in, there, this, in, there the, are, in the very vague, in a very vague There are scenario, many, many things in between those well, two options. What I'm saying is, in my scenario, I bet on, all right, this ain't going to be pretty. It's not going to be uh, traditional. Doesn't come with a manual where you go like, well, for, it's not like baseball, where you go rookie ball, single A, double A, triple A, MLB. There's none of that in, in comedy or in acting or anything. And I'm very much into like that hippie mentality. Like I was saying, I'm bohemian, where I kind of like, yeah, I, I roll with the universe. I have learned over the years, over the seven years of pursuing something I'm passionate about. Uh, have you ever read the book, The Alchemist? Mm -mm. Okay, well, there's a book called The Alchemist, and essentially it's like a fictional book about this young boy who's like journey for a treasure. And along the way, a uh, thousand and one things happen to him, but in, essentially it's like the universal, the language of the universe and understanding the language of the universe. And that's the way I've always felt like the more I've been involved in comedy, the more I've pursued it, it's put me in situations that never in a million years would I th walk into this random bar in New York at a five o'clock to meet these people from a complete different walk of life to it's sit there. It's an unnatural talk. hour. <laughs> but it's being, too early for anyone to be up, too late for anyone to be Being up. a comedian, you run into it all, bro. You'd be surprised. I'm doing mics at 12 p.m. in New York and there's someone drunk, not me, there <laughs> already. So, but again, this is just like you, it's not just so like black and white or you know, you got to make this much money to do this. It's me just for a long time betting on myself, betting on what I want to do. And then also having this, being this hippie bohemian mentality I have, I have over the years of doing comedy have also built this weird connection with the universe as far as like feeling when something's right, doing things that you typically wouldn't do, um, having faith i think to me the biggest thing and i know to some people it's like well you know you can't measure faith you can't put a number on faith a thousand percent but my school of thought and the way i've like just fed my brain over the years what if your school of thought was wrong though but it's i have too many i have too many examples around me to to think that just as many examples as there are of like you know if you do this so they're not step anecdotal? by step the what so they're not anecdotal 
hold on. What do you mean by anecdotal? I'm not the smartest <laughs> crayon in the box, bro. In what sense? In what sense? Like, you know, they're not anecdotal. Let me put this in another way. Because I can tell that since it's just you, that we can just be more bohemian and all this stuff. And right. even, even with the wife, if she vibes with it, that's fine. Right, right, right. Our kids in the future. Absolutely. A thousand percent. How many kids? When? Uh, I, I say three, uh, but my, my wife says, you know, if I have one and then done, then it's one and done. And I said... And, yeah. One to three, then. One to three. In how many years? Somewhere along the next, you know, within the next 10 years, easy. I mean, I don't want to have my first kid when I'm 40. So okay. let's say within the next five years for that, at least the first. Okay. Let's say. It is irresponsible of a parent to not be 100% set up for retirement if they have kids because then it forces them to be financially responsible for their parents. Mm. Yes. I don't believe that. Because they're not going to allow their parents to just die on the street. What do you mean you don't believe that? I don't believe that. I don't, I don't yeah, believe yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say why. Oh, I, I just, I don't, I don't believe that it's, I think that's parenting. If you grow up to tell your kid, you got to take care of me, you know, then yeah, your kid's going to feel guilted into taking care of you because they don't have that much money or your parents don't have that much money. But I never would tell my kid, like, it's your responsibility. No, I got to no, work. No, no, I'm not saying you're telling them, but I'm saying if you're not able to afford to retire because you never saved up any money to retire, which at this point, we're not saving up any money to retire, right. they are going to feel morally obligated to take care of you and put certain things of their life on hold because of that. No, I don't believe that. I believe Why? that because that's my job to tell them whether I'm working, just because someone doesn't want to work. So you think that it's, they're just going to allow you to die on the street? But I wouldn't allow myself to do it. Mm. I don't have a problem with working until, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s. Like, just because... So better to 50s and 60s. I mean, I mean how many people are retired and get bored and go like, bro, I need to do something? Yes, yes. But it's, there... Again, no, no, no. There are, things, there are things outside of our control. Completely different. If, right. if you're in a medical situation where you cannot work, Social Security might not even be a thing by the time we retire. Right. Who knows what Medicaid Medicare will be like? You can't rely on those things because they're, at least at this point, on the verge of being broken. And right. then what if your own body is broken? There are health issues, things like this. You cannot guarantee that you're able to work into your 80s and 90s. True. Very true. A thousand percent. So then you put the pressure on your children. Mm, I, don't, I don't believe that, man. That's, Tell me how. I have family. I got other people. Whether it's being so you're putting pressure on, on them. other people. Then, yeah. Okay, for sure. So but not my kids. You're I okay putting a kid. burden on other people. I don't want to see it as a burden. What do you mean? If they're forced to do something because they're morally obligated because they don't want to see you die on the street. Yeah, no, but I just feel like that's not Because you were irresponsible in your life leading up to that. No, nah, I don't I wouldn't believe that. I want to say it's being irresponsible. I think what that's do you mean? the wrong I think that's the wrong word for it. Not being able to sustain your own life and take care of yourself yeah. is not irresponsible? Yeah, but I have not not done that. No one's ever so helped. Far, no one's so, ever taken care. No, no, no. Care no. Of so far you have not done that. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. And I and I still plan on that not being the case. Like don't get me wrong, gun to my head, someone goes like, "Hey homie, you're 32. You got to figure this shit out." You got to get out there and you got to oh. get a $60,000 job or whatever the case may be. No question. And whatever I got to put, whatever I can put away, I put away. You know what I mean? The reason I bring that up is because you've already admitted that the, the 88 to 32 to 12 doesn't matter to you when it comes to each decade passing. It doesn't matter to you. So in that case, that is being irresponsible for the future you taking care of yourself. From your perspective. From the perspective of math in the United States capitalistic society. From your perspective. It's from the society of reality from, and personal finances. From my perspective, from the examples that I'm using and going off of, yes, doing $50,000 at a show, as much as you want to say like, that's a big what if. Yes. I don't have that what if. So that's why from my perspective, you have financial insight, right? I have worldly insight. I have different insight that doesn't come into a play of money or value or quantity. Well, shocker, when it comes to retirement, money and personal finances is what wins. Um, say that to every comedian who has been successful. Tell that to Again, Steve I said we don't need to think about them because that's the only people we think about. We don't think about the 99% who don't make it. Because why think about the people I don't relate to? 
Why think about how the do you people know that you I don't, don't relate to? Okay, let's talk about the words you already mentioned. Let's talk okay. about the word bet. You said you don't bet on the 80, 32, 12. That's not bad. That's just math. But, right, you, right, right, but sure. you say, let's well, let's just forget the that might or might not happen when it comes to getting a $50,000 show. That is a legit bet. You are betting your future on that. This is not bet. This is finance, basic math reality. That is bet reality. Bet reality. Right. So my reality was never to pursue that. That's my reality. I never pursued that. No, but you talked about this is a bet. What you're doing is a literal oh, bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get what you're saying. Like, yeah, for sure. That's numbers. That's facts. You can't negate that. There's no negating that for sure. But what I'm saying by bet is my approach to retirement isn't that way. My compound of interest of my savings and all that isn't that way. It's never been that way. So you're okay with being at the casino, just all on black, all on black, all on black, constantly? No, no, no. I bet I, I I do the roulette. I love the roulette. I space out my bets. You know, I don't put it all on one. I kind of bet the quadrants. I'll bet pairs. I'll bet colors. So not going all in on black. Not okay. my style. So you're not going all in on comedy? Oh, no, that's different. You said gambling. You said gambling you in the casino. You are gambling your financial future. I'm absolutely going all in on comedy. Not going all in on black. I'm going all in on comedy. 99% chance to lose, 1% chance to win. We are going 100% absolutely. on the 1%. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Sure. What did you do as far as like hobbies were concerned when you were younger? Or even now? Like Music, you make videos. Okay. Uh, I always made, I've always made videos in different ways. So production. Had, there was a YouTube channel when I was in high school that me and my friends made, and then also making music. Okay, so had there been a way to someone tell you, like, listen, you can make money off of it. We don't know how much money you're going to make, but it was looking promising. You got, you know, not the whole year. You're not crushing it all year, but you're getting those little, you rub elbows with this person. You go do this with that person, and you rub elbows around these people, these individuals you recognize in your industry, let's say the music or production industry, and you saw a glimmer of hope of like, mm, I could do something with this. I can make this happen, Right? Would you not want to pursue that? I mean, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe in your philosophy, you like the safer, more secure route. You got numbers, facts, things you can't really negate. Well, it's not about that. I would say I would 100% do what you were doing before I understood anything about personal finances. Right. But once me and the braid inside of me were confronted with facts and reality, then that's when you're forced to admit to yourself, do I stay ignorant to reality or do I accept the reality? And I chose to accept the reality. And that reality is, okay, and this and the music was the side hustle for the longest time. Right. Uh, never expected to make money off of videos. Uh, but I was like, okay, so I'm going to be working and always work during that, saving for my retirement, saving for my first home. Well, I pursue musical activities on the side that are side hustles. And if that gets to a point where I can make it, then I will pursue that full time, as I've recommended here. Right. So that is what I did. If we, if anything we believe in the world, we just sit on it and think that we're right no matter what when new perspectives, especially perspectives with more reality on its side, we just block them out no matter what. Right. Then we're doing ourselves a, a disaver. For sure. For sure. Like to the certain, to a certain extent, I definitely agree with you. Like, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, oh, well, you know, that I'm not going to, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, no, it absolutely makes sense. What you're saying is a hundred percent factual, but what I'm saying is just that my philosophy, my way of thinking, it's not so much that I'm pushing that out the way, but it's, I'm focused on another avenue. I'm focused on another way of getting to where I want to be. That doesn't have to be this way. Like, and again, I know you're saying, well, you're, the, you're talking about the 1% who've made it. Absolutely. Why would I look at the 99% of people who didn't make it? The, th the lessons I look at the 99% for would be how to not make it. Right. I've seen people and this is solely off my experience around comedians that I've been with that they've been doing it. Let's say we have been doing it for three years and they go, well, I'm not making enough money. I can't, if they're not going to book me for money, I'm not going to do this. Mm -hmm. And like right off rip, if you're doing it for the money, you're in it for the wrong reason. Like every comedian or any artist that's pursuing the artistry industry seriously will tell you if you're doing it for the money, 99 percent of the time you're doing it for the wrong reason. And I've seen comedians that fall off because they don't 
get the money they want right away. So they're like, nah, you know, this, I'm out. I've seen comedians at Eagles get big and they think they should be headlining every show when they barely got a 20 minute set down and they want to do 45 and their ego knocks them out. I've seen comedians that don't want to put the work of going night in and night out to uh, dive bars. You know, like I've crushed in a 350 theater. Very next day, I go bomb and die at a dive bar. It's very humbling. So, yeah, I'll look at the 99% of the people who didn't make it to see what they lacked that I don't lack. Like, do, does that mean that I don't get frustrated that I'm not making money? Oh, a thousand percent. I mean, I'm literally typing up emails at home to send to bookers explaining to them like, yo, there's people who I feel like don't deserve these opportunities to get paid because they're not treating this job with the level of professionalism that I treat it with. And it's, all, you know, and, and uh, those sort of things are the ones that I'm just kind of like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm avoiding those pitfalls. I'm, e I'm checking my ego. I'm, I'm looking in the mirror and I do all that corn shit, David Goggins and all these guys talk about, about look at yourself in the mirror and talk to yourself, check in with yourself. You know, what, where is it? And you know, it's so funny because I was listening to a podcast today with Kevin Hart where he's like, you know, and it's refreshing to hear these individuals say thoughts that are in my head through their mouth where he was like, you're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna feel like, I'm not getting the opportunity. Why is this person getting the opportunity that I'm not? Yeah. So over the course of those years, you kind of put the blinders on and you focus on like, this is my goal. This is what I need to do. Yes. If I can get a in seats, no matter where I go in this country, it's for me, just to kind of put it into like layman terms, for me, it's more important to have a solid uh, group of individuals on my social media networking um, aspects to put is in seats than it is to worry about making a hundred thousand dollar killing myself at a job I, I'm miserable going to there um, are so many in between you always do the extremes but that but but like uh, why do fifty thousand how do you get to the hundred thousand you ain't gonna you make mean in a job yeah you're not gonna get to a hundred thousand I did in three sales. days a week I did well three I, days a week in five no, days a week no nights no nights all days, three days a week. Yeah, nine to five in nine sales. To five. I made over a hundred thousand. Where you went? But okay, now here's my next question: Did you have to wake up or go out to do other gigs at night? No, that was the thing. But I did my music stuff at night. But you clear, and I'm not trying to make. To I'm not trying to be goals. offensive or anything by no stretch. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is that you, I made well more than the thousand you dollars you've ever made for sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, no need to say that with that attitude. Or Sorry, so. I thought you were gonna bring up. Did you? Well, did you make money from? No, it? no, no. What I'm saying is, oh, okay. you took the 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 approach of like, let me be less aggressive on this and treat this more like a side hustle, and mm -hmm. let me treat the bread and butter like the money I'm making at my job at the office of sales. Let me hone in on that because that's going to be the more revenue bringing and it's going to let you meet the goals you want to meet because you're bringing in more money. I see what you're saying. Right. I slightly disagree because in my mind, the way I did it is what I wanted to be was a composer. And then here is what sent me up for financial success. Instead of saying, okay, I had a side hustle that I just hope works. And then I have the real job. What I said is I have two jobs and I will just work until I fall. And now you're not doing music no more. Well, I still do music on the side, but YouTube has become my passion. Okay, so YouTube is, is your passion. It is. And are you making more money from that? Like, yes. are you making most of your money from YouTube? As I've gotten lucky to? where I can do this full time. I don't think you've gotten lucky, bro. I think you've worked your ass off. I don't think you've gotten lucky. Well, I, I don't that. think this just landed in your life. Like, I, like you were just talking about other projects you've worked on, you know? But I would have never done this until I knew I could sustain myself. For sure. But again, it was the route you took. It was the route that played out for you. It was the way that you were able to see things and go. Like me having a, um, a $50,000 job because of my mentality, I know it was, at, it was there. Don't, don't get me, now as an adult, I can look at it and say it was there. But from what I, my belief system, what I knew at 18 or 17, what I thought of, what I valued, wasn't what it is now at 29, where now I look at things different and I kind of see like, oh, I could have done this. But now I'm just like, okay, but this is the route. This is been, because there always goes like the what ifs and what if I would have gotten this job and what if I would have become an assistant manager? Maybe in a parallel universe, for sure. But at the end of the day, I live this reality. It's my only reality. And these decisions I've taken over the years, right or wrong, failures ultimately lead into successes. It has brought me here where I go like, okay, now I'm in too deep to take my foot off the gas. Because think about it. Like you said, I went from 88 to 32 
why why kick it in now when I'm going to make 12? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like why now? Why switch? Why throw away the seven years of times that I the seven years of time I've put into inter- my entertainment industry? No one's talking about throwing it away. You're I'm just doing gonna, you're you, doing the extreme of not bringing in any money now. Right, right, right. For sure. But I'm not against this being a hustle that you're right, grinding. But I don't see it as, and I don't want to make it as the side hustle. No, if, make it your second full time job. If I have, oh, I mean, you're you working five hours a day. You said, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, working five hours a day. There are 19 more. <laughs> yeah, and uh, a, not a lot, but like, let's say, take off the seven for sleeping. Where let's I, make it eight. Let's, let's make healthy. it eight, and let's then healthy. let's say two to three hours are when I'm not writing and doing stuff. Two to three of those Why? hours, because I'm at a show. Oh, okay. That's so right. I'm either waiting for to market get on research. A show. Market research, right? Okay. And then like, don't get me wrong. Like, I brought my laptop now, and I'm doing a show. Uh, the sign up is in, in like another hour or two, but then there's another show after that. So like, technically, I'll be at one spot six thirty, and I'll be at another spot at nine thirty. And by the time I get home, give or take, and I like that. I'm all good for that. Right, right, right. But that's that's why I'm going like I'm looking at rather than working two full time jobs like what you're saying, which makes total sense. I'm looking at like and again, this kind of where the waters get a little murky, but I'm a big believer of God. I'm not religious in the sense of like I'm reading the Bible every day. I'm not that guy. I'm not going to church. I have my own relationship with my God and the universe and what I believe in. And the way I see it is just um, I I. I believe that this is, there's no, there's no what if for me because I see it as this is a calling. It's something special that I can't put into words that when I tell people like, well, when I go on stage, this feels perfect. And then getting paid after you do that becomes almost intoxicating to know it makes going to the nine to five that much harder. It does. I know. I get that. Because they hit you with eight hundred. I get that it's harder, but we're that's why we're uh, mature adults. For sure, for sure. And I think the more mature thing would have been to just be like, "Well, I'm just gonna make it, and I'm gonna make it because I'm gonna make it." As opposed to this this time around, when I left, I had. I mean, every time I've left my my prior company, I've always had another job or something lined up. It's never been on a whim. You don't even have to have a job. Just uh, drive Uber. I don't even care. Oh wait, the, the yeah, the yeah, car. yeah. And when I did want to drive Uber the first time, we I haven't even Uber. gotten into the car, and you've been able to buy a car. But I don't see it happening in a good economical way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, unless your wife buys it, maybe. Who together. knows? I mean, married. Who knows, bro? You never know. I literally have my godmother. Somebody. Some guy she just happened to be nice to. She gave food to him every now and then, checked on him, knocked on his door, ended up going to home, and his daughter came up to my godmother and handed her the key to the house, to the apartment, and said, this is yours. Yeah, This I, is your house now. Now. I don't base my life on luck. Well, but yeah. For sure. For sure. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you're, the, the possibilities and the reality of what is a possibility to me and my brain, I think is very more... Um, uh, fictional, right? It's more, it's more hoping and fingers crossed and praying, you know. And that's my belief. My belief is like me going on stage, doing what you love. They say, do what you love, and you'll never work another day in your life. And I can't tell you how many times I felt like that doing comedy. And I know that this is a thing where it's uh, do what you love, and you'll never work a day in your life until you can't afford rent, then you'll have to work, or else you'll be homeless on the street. Yeah, but that's if that's your philosophy and that's what you believe in. I mean, rent's not a philosophy. It's not. It's not. But who's how are, how are you more right in me saying, or am I more right in, in saying, tomorrow I can get booked for a $500 gig. Do it. Next week I can get booked for a $1,500 gig. Do it. That's what I'm saying. So there's no, that can't happen. That No. Of course. You would think that's ridiculous. If you can, can do happen. that, then you can make this your full-time job. And too but many times it's happened. happened where, of course, it's not 500 bucks or 1,500 bucks, but it's, hey, come down to this studio. I don't know if you ever heard of the, the podcast Drink Champs. Nope. All right. Very popular podcast in the hip hop world. Very, a uh, lot of accolades behind it in the whole nine and- I got a call one day because I was not working where I was working. I was pursuing something else. And they said, hey, we got Marlon Wayans coming into the studio. Like, you want to come sit sit down and meet him and do this? And yeah, f- for sure. You want to sit? Of course. Aerie Spears, another one of my favorite comedians growing up. 
these sort of events have happened to me over the course of this battle of like do the thing where you have this financial stability because i know i would have not been able to do this had i been where i was why if you were doing a job where you work the hours you want to work through like uber you could have gone done this it's not an extreme either or it's not black or white but you got to understand that uber and all that jazz didn't exist the way it did. And even if I could do it, I couldn't because my, oh, okay. my car didn't fit the qualifications. Okay, of it. I see what you're saying. Well, that's an example, of course. Right, right, right. But I get what you're saying. I totally agree. Uh, but at the end of or the day... Or pull the classic, oh, crap, I'm having diarrhea. I'm not coming into work. Right, right, which I've, I've never done that. I've always showed up oh, I've done that. And I've let them see me, and then they go, oh. yeah, you can't be here, bro. <laughs> go home. And I was like, all right, cool. As long as you know I'm not bull- you like that's yeah. my biggest thing okay i i think this conversation has gone like as far as it can because you know we're just kind of going in circles and that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah i'm good with you pursuing i'll give my final thoughts and you can have your final thoughts absolutely i'm good with you pursuing this i don't want any of this to come across like i'm not no. i just want you to be able to put yourself in a place where you're not uh forcefully putting on family members and children that need to be taking care of you and you're getting rid of the best decades of your life uh in order to pursue essentially gambling your career do this. I would do it as a second full-time job as it is the passion. Hopefully it becomes the full-time job and you can pursue it full-time and then everything becomes good. Let's also be responsible adults and prepare for the worst. Let's also be responsible adults and make some money now so that you can get a car this year of $10,000 in cash and not having to go into debt. Let's just be adults and make sure that we are accepting that maybe everything we think and wish is not reality at all times. That is my final thoughts. I wish the best. I'm very curious to see where you land. I hope it's that you made it, because then I can say I met a famous comedian. That'd yeah, be awesome. Absolutely. But final thoughts. Um, I think, yeah, I, I definitely hear what you're saying. I think you're coming with a lot of logic behind it. There's, there's no opinion here. It's all facts. You know what I mean? You're showing numbers. You're telling things like they are. Um, I think just because of my, you know, personal belief and my philosophy and the way I think and I view the world kind of has a different perspective on it. And I do for a fact, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it here on this podcast for the first time. You heard it here. Use this clip when I'm famous. Uh, Definitely going to be making that money. Maybe not hundreds of thousands, but if I could cool, you know, a cool $80,000 within the next two years just doing comedy. You know, I, everything else is extra, man. So as long as I have to cover my bills, pay my rent, you know, put put some extra in the savings, make sure the kids are set up just through comedy, that'd be the biggest blessing. And I just want to be a messenger to what the universe allows you to do when you believe in the universe and it believes in you, you know. So that's uh, my final little wrap up. Do you have any sets on YouTube or anything? Uh, yeah, I got my website. Everything's on my website. All right, it's linked in the description below. Check it out. There you go. Seabassmatar.com. All my stuff's there. So... Yeah, check, check it out, absolutely. All right, for Seabass and his Hammer Financial Score, you know, actually, he does have savings. He's not bringing any money, but he doesn't have any bad debts. Seventy-five, uh, $7,500 in student loans I wish we could have talked about, but some of that does hang up on will it get forgiven for going to something that was kind of spammy? I don't know. But his overall life score and the bet he's taken on all this stuff and future retirement being prepared for that, it's going to drastically lower the score. But because he doesn't really have that many bad debts or anything like that, uh, he does need to buy a new car, though. Crap. Hammer Financial Score, 4 out of 10. Make sure to check out all the fun things in the description, including my Instagram and Twitter and his website to check out some of his comedy. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.